1997, Kelly graduated from Washington Marion Magnet High School. During her high school tenure, Kelly was an active participant of area-wide Baptist Youth Week. In 2003, Kelly graduated from Magnet State University, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in speech communication and a minor in theater. She has also attended Louisiana Tech University, Northwestern State University, and New Orleans Theological Baptist Seminary, where she completed coursework in counseling and women's studies. As an, in, as an energetic professional, Kelly currently serves Grambling State University as the retention coordinator for the Office of Retention. In addition to working to keep students enrolled in school, she also leads the Ladies' Room, a weekly Bible study available to female students. Kelly is married to Reverend Lance T. Wright. When they are not working or attending support events, Kelly and Lance love spending time with their children, Eden, uh, Eden Isabella, age six, Ele Alexander Stone, age three, and Karis Sophia, 10 months. Our speaker for this morning, Ms. Kelly Monroe Wright. We drove up and we sat in the parking lot and I told Lance, I was like, oh my goodness. So not only did I participate in every youth week that I could have, because I just love, couldn't wait till three o'clock on Sunday. Even after being in church all day, I still was ready to go at three o'clock. But New Sunlight was my first job when we had the summer programs for the, uh, the Lake Charles, Capuchin Parish oh, at the wow. summer work programs. New Sunlight had hired me in their daycare. <laughs> <laughs> So that was my first experience at 16. Not that I didn't have a lot of kids at home, because you all know my parents had four, but working in the daycare is a little bit <laughs> uh, different, would you say, Ms. Prescott? <laughs> so it was a little different, but enjoyed it, and uh, never went back to work in another daycare ever <laughs> uh, <laughs> from that experience. But uh, thank y'all too for having me today. Um, a lot of people to thank and love um, in here, but just feel like this is my village, so thank y'all for all what you've done for Kelly Monroe, <laughs> now <laughs> Kelly Monroe Wright, and for just being in my life, and um, just good to be back. So thank y'all for having me today. Um, saw that theme, and I'm all about dressing well most of the time if I can, without um, it laying so no, and I just thank my husband too for supporting and dropping us down to three and a half our <laughs> ride to come down here today, but um, laying out clothes and dressing well and trying to instill that in my kids in the morning and getting it done and making sure everything is okay. So this is a very important uh, theme to me, uh, especially being a believer. So why is it important for us to dress well, to do well for Christ? It's the first question we're going to ask today. Um, if we're all believers in here and we are saying that we're Christian youth trying to dress well for Christ, then we're understanding that we're under God's kingdom and we're living here in his kingdom. That's what we're reaching for. We're reaching to live great in his kingdom and his kingdom has standards. So number one, it's important for us to dress well for him and do well for him because his kingdom has standards. Talk. And Satan has tried to cheapen those standards for yeah, us yeah. and allow us to think that we can do anything, look any kind of way, go out unprepared. But it's important to God for us to be prepared in the way of looking the part. And when looking the part, we have to remember we're ambassadors. We're ambassadors for this kingdom. When you step out your door, you're not just representing you. Yeah. Uh, Rick Warren has a, the book, the uh, his first book that he wrote, one of the first lines in that book said it's not about not you. About and I will never forget that line as long as I live because it's not. It's not about us. We're always representing him. Um, and I know the sunlight still does it. The usher badges. I know you still, we still do the usher badges. We don't know ushers until we walk in the church and see them with our badge. No one knows who we are as Christians until we let them know who we are. But they need to. Re we need to always represent him as ambassadors for Christ. And our main goal here, God doesn't put us here just for any kind of reason. We all have a purpose here. Mm -hmm. We're not all ministers and singers and all of that, but we have to reach the lost. Mm -hmm. And what am I talking about with the lost? Who are the lost? We're talking about the people that have no clue, have never heard the gospel, that are living any kind of way, that don't understand his kingdom. 
They don't understand why we're living here. That's our purpose. We have to reach the lost. We have to go out and make disciples. That's our great commission. It's to go out and make disciples among the world. Go out and teach them about the Bible in the way that we're gifted into teaching them and letting them know who we are and letting them know who our God is and who do we serve and why do we serve them. Why do we serve him? Um, and before you get dressed, just say we got an invitation to go somewhere, young people. You got your prom invite. Can we say, can we use prom? Y'all get excited about it. I know. I didn't have a good prom experience, so maybe y'all will have a better one. <laughs> you, get, you got your invitation, and it tells you, you probably don't even read through it. You just got the invitation. You're like, oh, I'm so excited. We're going to prom. We're going to prom. Okay, I just know you just got to get dressed up. But you don't read anything else because you got on the phone with somebody. Or you got on Facebook, you're talking about it all on Facebook. You're tweeting about it, you're on Snapchat talking about how you're going to prom, but you have not read through your invitation about where you're going yet. Well, God has given us the invitation. He's given us all the invitation to heaven one day. And that's our ultimate invitation. Yeah. And I'll grasp it really fast, <coughs> knowing him. And that's what we're asking you to do today. Grasp that invitation. Mm -hmm. But we have to read through his instruction Woo. of his yeah. word well, to understand well, how to get there. Right. Right. Now, before you get dressed for prom, you got to know where you're going. you got to prepare yourself with this invitation. Because there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen on your way mm -hmm. to get to where you're going. Yeah. Our destination is heaven, but it's a lot of detours. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's some stops, it's some accidents, some turnarounds, mm -hmm. yeah. some stuff that you just not going to expect when you get on the road, right. when you're going on your destination. And these things happen, and God allows them to happen so he can know, okay, I'm going to allow this to happen to Kelly so she can draw her strength from me on the way. Right. But I don't know how to draw my strength unless I get in his word right. and get prepared. Right. And one of the things that he tells us in is putting on the right clothes before we go. Now, if you're something like me, I'm probably thinking about it the night before. I might get on Pinterest to kind of look at something really quick <laughs> to think about what I'm going to wear for work because it's important to be dressed well for your job and for what you're doing. Um, I don't know how serious you would have taken me today in my warm-up um, that I'm going to have on when I leave to get on the road. I just don't know how serious you would have taken me today. That's right. If I wore my plaid pajamas, my Christmas pajamas that I had on last night. <laughs> they so comfy. I just don't know how serious you would have taken me. So um, you have to put on the right clothes. And Paul in Ephesians, your wonderful scripture that you chose about spiritual warfare, is he tells us in his encouraging word in Ephesians to... Put on the armor of God. He's telling us that because he's saying when you get around these pitfalls and all these things that are going to happen to you on this road, this road that God created, but he, Satan is allowed to trample across his road because he knows where you're going. He knows you're trying to live for his kingdom, young people. He knows that you are an ambassador for Christ. And he knows when you reach that lost person that that's going to be more people added to the kingdom of God. Satan already knows that. He's picked in your future. He sees where you're going. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Yeah. Now, God has made a promise to you to tell you already, no matter what is on that road, he already knows the plans. But his plans to prosper you, nothing to harm you or to do anything. So we follow Paul's instructions in the word about how to get there and what we need to do to get there. We'll be ready. Um, in preparing for the journey, Paul tells us we have to lay out these clothes in our bed at night before we get ready in the morning. He's telling us the belt of truth. Why do we need a belt? I know y'all don't all really wear belts and stuff in the world, but why do we need this belt of truth? Because Satan lies. Right. It's just yeah. that simple. He yeah. lies. Good stuff. Yeah. He 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 lies so good, he thinks it's the truth at the end of the day. <laughs> because it's so good, y'all know. He lies. So without the belt of truth, we just cut anything can come. Anything. We believe anything. We, anybody can throw us anything and we'll believe it. Right. Satan will tell us the sky is going to be purple and it's going to rain Skittles. And we'll believe it because we don't have on that belt of truth. Right. So we have to be girded with that belt of truth. And that body armor. You can't walk out in a battle with all the darts ready to fly at you. And that's God's righteousness. What is God's righteousness? That's for his protection of our hearts and our emotions. Yeah. You ever get so fired up, mad about something and you just spit out the mouth at something you don't know where it's coming from and your heart is hurting? God is saying we got to protect that with his body armor. Mm. We don't want Satan to attack our heart because our heart controls everything. That's right. Yeah. It controls our mind. It controls how we feel. It controls how we treat people. Yeah. So we need that body armor to, con to combat that heart and control to uh, guard our heart. 
This is my favorite part. We need shoes. <laughs> this is a different kind of shoes. <laughs> this is shoes of peace. So these peace are going to give us an understanding that nobody else can understand. When chaos and things are flying around and you can sit there in the midst of peace and people don't understand why you're not getting all jumped up and rattled up about right, it. Right, right, it's because right. you have on those shoes of peace yeah, that God has given us. And those shoes also prepare us to go out and reach the lost with the good news. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those shoes will take you places where you never thought that you would go because you're carrying the word of God with you. And they will, God, those shoes will prepare you to share that good news of the Lord. And then we have our shield of faith. Ladies, this is going to be our purse. But God, this is going to be our word. That shield of faith. This is what you're going to use to block all those insults, to block all those nasty Facebook messages that people put out there, all the stuff on Snapchat that only lasts 24 hours, but you saw it. Good stuff. Yeah, you yeah. saw it, and it hurts. But you need something to block that with. Yeah. Even when things you think is not going to affect you, you still need to block yeah. some of the stuff from movies and the music and talk, everything talk, that you're not thinking that's affecting your mind. It's affecting yeah. you. It's affecting it. But you need that shield of faith yeah, into yeah. Ask the Lord, is this good for me? Yeah. Is this good for me? And how is this going to affect me? But God, God is telling us through Paul, if I give you that shield of faith, you will be able to block all those things, all those insults, those temptations that you have, because we all have them. Because I want a biscuit right now, but I can't have a biscuit. <laughs> the temptations of, do I date this guy, but he wants me to do something that I really don't want to do. Because right. I know it's not right. Or this girl wants me to do something. They want me to go a place that I really know that I don't need to be. Mm -hmm. That shield of faith, so faith will block that away. It'll keep you safe from that. Yeah. And this is the hell. The next mm -hmm. child of God. Yeah. That you don't ever doubt that you are his chosen generation. Yeah. 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 Don't ever doubt that. And that, that helmet yeah. will keep that mind safe. Yeah. Yeah. From thinking that somebody could come and tell you something that you're not saved. Yeah. I'll give you a reason of what you got to do to be saved when you know the only re the only way is through Jesus. Jesus Christ. Don't ever let anyone tell you it's another way to him. Right. It's only through Jesus. Right. But that helmet is going to protect you from that. Yeah. And then our only weapon of defense, because God is saying, you are, if I'm protecting you with all of this, you only need one thing to defend you. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Just one. And that's the sword. Yeah. The word of the God. The word of yeah. God. Yeah. And it might not be popular to walk around with your Bible in your hand and stuff all the time. But you have it on your phones. Yeah. You have it in different places. And I'm not saying you just have to walk around with it. Because that's what the Pharisees did. They just walked around. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So we want to be different. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to yeah. be them. We want to actually show the love. Yeah. We want to show people the word. We want to have it so hidden in our hearts that when we speak, people are hearing the word through our voice. So God has given us all this to lay out. So we lay this out at night before we go to our destination. So when laying that out, you don't just put it on. Who just put on their clothes and don't clean themselves up before you put the clothes on? So now that's what we look like on the outside. So now let's clean up the inside part right, right, right. Yeah. So now these are the things that we're going to bathe ourselves in. And I love the other scriptures that you chose, the Colossians, about who we are, who right. we represent, and what comes out. Um, the worst thing in the world is to walk up somebody all dressed up. Come on, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if they would have uh. just took a bath. <laughs> grown and they think, I'm just going to sleep for three days, get up and come to your office and talk to you in here. So, <laughs> you like to know what I'm talking about. It's <laughs> um, it's, you can put on all kind of stuff, all kind of nice name brand anything, but if you stink, nobody's going to take you seriously. Right, nobody's right. going to be around you. Paul gives us, the, again, the characteristics of an aroma Whew. that a oh. Christian gives off. Come on now. We give up a good aroma. Sweet. We really yeah. live in what Sweet he wants us to live in. Come on now. Um, verse 12 says, since God chose you to be holy. So he already telling you, he chose you to be holy. There's no other way. That's his standard. That's his kingdom standard. Um, he says, bathe yourself in tenderhearted mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you being nice to yeah. people? Is your Facebook? I'm just gonna keep using that because I see some nasty stuff. Yeah. From grown folks or something. It's yeah. not just you. Are you being nice to people when you have to be nice to people? Just plain nice. Um, are you being kind to them? Uh, do you think of them and their needs in being kind? Are you just really selfish and thinking of yourself when people come up on you? Do they know that you're going to be kind to them? 
And kindness is being able to be led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To think of someone else's needs before yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you have to be led by the Holy Spirit because sometimes Satan will trick us in thinking that we being nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you were nice to that person. It's okay because they asked for a dollar and you gave them 50 cents, but you know you had 10 and you could have gave them a dollar. But it's okay because you gave them 50. He'll trick you into thinking that you're being nice to somebody at the end of the day when you're not. And making you think that you don't have to respond in a Christian way to someone. And you always do. Mm. But when we're listening to the Holy Spirit and we're aligned with his word and we're getting prepared for the journey, we can know how to respond and be kind. Are we humble? Can you take a compliment? And truly take a compliment and say thank you. Do you brag a lot on yourselves? And don't give the credit where credit is due? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. When we're believers, our credit always belongs to God. That's right. Our strength always is strong. If anything and everything that we do comes from God. But the minute we take our eyes off of him and sink like Peter did because he thought he was doing it on his own. And I love Peter. <laughs> but when we take our eyes off of him and don't give God the credit, we immediately sink. It's not the same. We sink. And our next one is gentleness. And gentleness, you know, and looking this up and talking about gentleness, you know, you think it's touch. You think it's, oh, I'm going to do like you do with a newborn baby. I'm just going to be gentle with you and not want to touch you. And that little 10 month old I had at home, she was so tiny. She was born at five months. I mean, five, uh, five pounds. So it was extra gentleness that we had to take with her. You know, we're teaching. That was the word we told our son. Be gentle. Be gentle. And after a while, it was a joke for him. Um, gentle, gentle. So um, in being gentle, it's not only just touch, but it's just... Submit your mind to God yeah. in a way where you just want to listen to him about how to treat people yeah. and having consideration for others in your life. Being able to hear his wisdom on different situations. Yeah. So being gentle is not just a touch thing. Mm -hmm. and when you touch, it's when you're dealing with people and how soft you are to the responding to them yeah. and how soft you are with your heart in responding to them in your mind and your words. And then there's this favorite word that we all love, our patience. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always told not to ask God for patience because he will give you reasons right, right, not right. to. And I think I mistakenly prayed that some years ago because then I got Alexander Stone, my three-year-old son, who <laughs> tested every day. <laughs> but he had to learn even in patience the other day. He wanted churches so bad. If you've ever been to Groundland, I've been to the Grambling churches. Elijah, go raise your hand. It is the slowest <laughs> church in the world. And I know that. And I know that. But he wanted it so bad the other night. And so we're sitting in the car at 6 o'clock. And usually I'm already home. And I'm like, okay, Alexander just wants this church is so bad. And he said, Mama, why they take it so long? I was like, Alexander, they have to cook the chicken. And, you know, they have to prepare. And they have other people. And he says, wait, hey, y'all people. In churches, give me some chicken. Give it to me right now. And I was like, you're not gonna. That's not the way we ask the things. I was like, we put it out order. I said, but now we have to wait. And in the ten minutes we had to wait at churches for this chicken, he was so impatient. But the Lord told me, Kelly, you have to teach him on how to be patient right, right. with people when you can't get exactly what you want, what you wanted, but it's no, it's something that you need and that you want. And through that moment, we had to. I had to talk to him through patience because. I didn't want him demanding things from people whenever he wanted to demand it from people the way that he wants to do Good it. illustration. Right, right. Good. And I have to show him even at three, hey, this is not how it works. Right. This is not the kind of life that we're going to live. Yeah, this right. is not God's kingdom, even when it comes down to chicken strips. No, it looks not how we're going to live. Good illustration. But how hard, hard is it for us to be patient with people because we want stuff so fast. I mean, if my internet running a little bit slow on my phone, what? I'm mad. When years ago I didn't have that, I had that little oh, kid that didn't do much of nothing, you know. So that, just that patience part, we have to understand that's a true characteristic. And then Paul tells us at the end of the day, just go ahead and put on love. Yeah. Now love is the true one because that's what the enemy will have us thinking that we loving people too. But it's such a balance in love that we've been learning about in Grambling, um, in loving people through so much situations, even what we have going on in our nation with our president, with administration at your school, your principals, your friends. How do we love them balanced? How do we know that we're really, really loving somebody and not just saying that we are? Balanced love. Wow. Are you concerned with their needs? 
Right. Are you concerned with the fact that they're lost? And if they are not lost, are you still loving them the way that you need to be loving them because they're believers? Because sometimes we're harder to love than anybody. Right. Yeah. The yeah. believers. So are we loving balance? Are we loving them with just not just their needs, but are we loving them and that they're lost also? And are we still loving our Christian brothers and sisters that sit next to us every day? And not just cutting each other off in the parking lot because we're trying to get home for the football game. <laughs> are we having a balance of needs, loss, and continue to love our brothers and sisters? So Paul gives us all these things that we bathe in so we can smell good when we come off to people and they know who we are. We don't want to go sticking up the kingdom all over the place. Mm. Right? <laughs> to wash the Marion and when LCB was here, I got to give LCB some shots. <laughs> you don't want to stick up the school and have people not wanting to come to your church and you having to think, I'm inviting these people to church, but why they don't come? Well, you're treating them so bad. <laughs> they can't trust you with their information and their private business that they're trying to share with you. To this beautiful, y'all so for this generation, I enjoy my time sitting up here and being served. Thank you for the water. <laughs> You're chosen. And yeah, you know, I used yeah. to just think when I heard that scripture, and it was at Youth Week, our youth encampment, when I first heard, and I believe the year I went to youth encampment in 1995, <laughs> that was the scripture. Yeah. Chosen generation. Royal first time hearing that scripture. Yeah. And if you are really going with an open heart to some of the stuff, it's going to get to you. Like, oh, God, you chose me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Devil, you, you've been here infinite amount of time. Yeah, yeah. You chose me? Uh -huh. And that's what he tells you, are a chosen generation. And one thing I love about this generation is they want truth uh -huh. yeah, and understanding. Yeah. Yeah, so mean. when we think and they looking on Facebook and being silly, and look, they are searching for truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes we fail, y'all, in the truth mm -hmm. and the understanding and what you see from us. And not just us in here, because this is this your group, this your village, this your family. So this is a trusting environment. So you'll know the others, you can know who to trust here. But just know when we know that you're looking for that truth and understanding, it's we're here. You can come to us for that. Amen. But Paul is giving you encouragement through the word. So you always have this when you can't find someone else. Right. And knowing who you can trust and Lord, what do I do in this situation? Do you is this a gray area or do you really have the instruction? And he does. He gives us that word. So when we have this invitation to the kingdom, and it's your choice whether you are SVP or not. That's your decision and what you want to do. Uh, once you answer that call and say, Lord, I'm going to follow you. And you say yes to the, to the call of God. You have to be prepared to go. So when pre in being prepared is we have to put on this armor. <laughs> and be prepared for warfare right. the things that we can't even see but the Lord is telling us is there yeah. and then we have to smell good when we get out yeah. and go on this earth and proclaim this good news so people know it's about him mm -hmm. and then when we look in the mirror at the end of the day we don't have to run like James said we can stand there and look and knowing that we look like Jesus and we're mirroring Jesus and other people see that along with right. us we don't want to have to look in the mirror and Forget what we saw because it's so gross and it's not what God intended. We want to mirror his image. And so how do we dress well to do well for Christ, young people? We do just that. We bathe in his character. Mm. We put on his armor. Mm -hmm. And we go out, reach the lost, and bring them back to the kingdom and let them share in the goodness of God. And thank you today. Amen. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Awesome.